Hey guys, Dave the MMP uh, back on Yola for some DIY fun. I want to talk about navigation. Uh, I've been playing around with a little Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's got a GPS puck and uh, the previous owner of this boat uh, had a laptop and uh, he built a little shelf uh, in the uh, settee area and you could kind of see it uh, from the cockpit, but it was kind of hard to control. He was running OpenCPN. Um, I've played around with my cell phone using Navionics. Um, I'm gonna, I bought this uh, mount for my tablet so I can run Navionics on my tablet. Um, I'll have to um, hotspot it to my phone to get uh, uh, navigation. It's not a cellular type tablet. Um, so the cell type tablets have the GPS chip in it. You don't actually have to have a SIM card in it with a plan. Um, to get it to run Navionics online. Um, it will just basically pick up the, uh, your GPS location and track you based on that. Um, but if you want maps and you don't have any cell phone uh, reception, you're gonna have to download the maps ahead of time for the location of where you're going, which is perfectly fine. A lot of people do that. Um, I've been playing around with OpenCPN on the Raspberry Pi, um, but I need to get a waterproof screen up in the cockpit because the um, the non-waterproof screens are just not going to last. Well, I just got to shut my kettle off here for a second. Making a little coffee. Um, so let's get into it. Okay, so here's typically my view. Uh, when I'm sailing, I'm able to look up over the Dodger. And this is kind of what I'm thinking for a setup. Um, I wouldn't use the tablet. Um, the tablet was normally sitting down on this little shelf down here and you could kind of see it from the cockpit but I couldn't really see it very well. The previous owner of this boat built that. Um, so I'm thinking this is going to be a much better area for the navigation. Um, whether I go with the tablet um, or I just put this, tab this laptop here just as a representation of the screen. This screen is a 14 inch tablet. I'm thinking about a 15 inch screen. Of course, you won't have the keyboard. The, the screen will just be sitting on a mount, kind of like this guy. Um, and it'll be networked with the Raspberry Pi. So I'd be running OpenCPN. I got lots of room with my winch here and my rope clutches. On this side, same thing. Winch is clear, rope clutches are clear. Um, the only thing I would have a problem with is pushing the companionway hatch forward. Of course, that wouldn't be there. I think what I'd end up doing with the large screen is mount it right here. So I'd be able to push, push this forward probably to that stage. Um, I'd have to probably flip it down. I can still get in and out of the companionway with that setup. So I think that would probably be fine. Um, this guy's probably gonna get changed to a wind instrument. Uh, I have some people, seen some people mount chart plotters in here, but it's too close to my compass. Um, I could put it on this side. I've got my uh, Pelagic Autopilot over here, so I could end up with a chart plotter here. Um, but I don't really want to chop a big hole in the bulkhead. Okay, let's see what happens in the boot up on the Raspberry Pi. I got my little uh, load sensor and we're going to do a boot up on bare boat essentials. It, the guy that wrote this thing, independent guy, and it was kind of based off of uh, uh, Open Plotter. And uh, they're both using Open CPN. This guy went a little farther and created a dashboard. Now, Open Plotter does have a bed dashboard, but I think this one is way superior. Um, and it's really the same way, you know, there's an image and you burn the image onto the SD card and then you put the SD card into the Raspberry Pi. I've got the Raspberry Pi right down here and I'm powering it with uh, one of these phone chargers. This is a pretty big one, a 20,000 milliamp one. Right now it's showing one amp um, when it boots at five volts. So this is the USB voltage that the Raspberry Pi uses. So it's going through the boot up procedure right now and it's gonna open the desktop. So there's the desktop for um, bare boating. Um, there's a bunch of stuff on here. There's chart plotter, there's music, um, there's Pi Pilot that you can use it as a um, autopilot. 
Um, you've got the internet here, which just basically opens Chrome, or you can get it to open Mozilla or something else like that. Um, you got a wind app right here. And uh, I'll show you what happens when that boots up. You've got weather, you've got a storm tracker, you can track lightning, you can track precipitation. Um, you've got your email, so you can just open your email. Basically, it's almost like uh, having a Windows desktop on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, Signal K, Signal K is really cool. And uh, you'll see why in a second when I open it. Um, you've got radio. Um, you've got your vessel, so you can add everything that you possibly want about your vessel. Um, power, you can tie this to Victron systems, uh, and it will uh, show you exactly what's happening. So now you've got an interface for Victron on your Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's pretty cool. So let's go back. I'm going to open OpenCPN. So down here, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's pulling about a half an amp at 5 volts. So let's open OpenCPN and see what I get. So whenever you open a new program, you get a little bump in power, of course, because the Raspberry Pi is doing something. Um, right now it's hitting about 0 0.8, 0 0.7 amps. And GPS is tracking my positions, not actually the boat, because I'm at home. So let's just zoom out here. But I wanted to leave the the uh, GPS puck on there just because the puck probably uses a little bit of power. So I wanted a real world test. So most of the things on OpenCPM have loaded. Uh, I've got 0.6 or 0.7 amps at 5 volts. So really that's like 700 milliamps. Pretty much nothing. Okay, let's go back to the desktop. I'm going to leave it OpenCPN running. And I'm going to open that app Wins. It's, it's based on the app of Windy. So a lot of sailors use Windy. This is the, uh, the keyboard. I'm not going to use that. Okay, so I'm based in Vancouver. Right now we got some beautiful sailing weather or some wind. Uh, looks like uh, 20 to 30 knots of wind right here blasting by the west coast of the island. Uh, let's do a little zoom in here and see what's happening in the inner harbor in Vancouver. Looks like about 15 knots of wind. Perfect sailing. So that's windy. Um, I can go back up to the desktop. Um, I can open my email and it will take me to my email. I'm actually using Gmail. So I've given it access to Gmail should open my email here in a second and so I'm watching the power here and every time I open a new program it comes up to 80 90 milliamps so there's my inbox perfect it's running a script called Thunderbird uh, what else we got other music uh, let me show you signal K so Signal K is a really good program for sailboaters. Okay, how come I'm not getting the dashboard? Did I open the wrong one? Yeah, I wanted the dashboard. Now one of the things that I'm probably gonna add to my sailboat so a lot of a lot of people running Open Plotter are using Signal K and they're using KIP. So KIP is the dashboard, and you can change all of these uh, meters. So you can change them to whatever scale you want, and you do that in Signal K. And then in KIP, KIP is how you display it. Um, I've seen a number of people. This is just a simulator because I'm not on the boat right now, so I just open the simulator. Uh, of course, because my wind instrument's in my depth and, and I'm not moving. So <clears throat> I've, I'm just opening the simulator just so that you can see what it looks like. But pretty cool dashboard. Um, I've seen people run this in half screen and run OpenCPN in the other screen. Uh, and that way you can get both of them onto your touch screen when you're sailing. So let's go back to OpenCPN. 
and opening the program doesn't really do anything. So the programs that I have open doesn't do anything for power draw. I'm still drawing 0.7 amps, which is like 700 milliamps, um, and at 5 volts. So really, you know, we'd be feeding this with 12 volts, uh, a 12 volt converter to 5 volts uh, on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's going to use almost no power. Um, I've ordered a 13-inch touchscreen for the boat, a uh, waterproof screen. And the manufacturer tells me that uses 15 watts. So this guy here pulling seven 700 milliamps and the 15 watts of the screen... Uh, I'll be able to use OpenCPN for days for the amount of lithium batteries that I've got on my boat. So I think this is the winner. Um, I looked at OpenPlotter, and OpenPlotter is really cool, um, but it doesn't have this kind of dashboard. It doesn't have the one-stop shop like this. Um, there are things that you can do with it, and you can play around with it. Um, but the guy that created this, um, Bare Boat Essentials, he's really gone, gone above and beyond. There's a couple of other chart plotters. There's Avnav here that you can use instead of OpenCPN. Um, the other thing that nobody really tells you about OpenCPN, I have my um, charts on here. So I purchased charts for the Pacific Northwest, um, actually the, the west coast of Canada. Um, if I scroll out here, because I don't own charts in the U.S., I think what it's going to show me when I go look at something down below the line here is it probably won't have the kind of resolution there. So I think it's going to fade out here at some point and it's not going to show me the kind of resolution that I want to see because I didn't load US charts. So if you start going down into the US down here, follow the coastline down, you're going to see not much resolution. Uh, mostly because I haven't bought charts for that area. So the charts for the west coast of Canada are $30. So this is the part that makes OpenCPN really desirable. Um, if you buy a chart plotter from somebody like Garmin or B&G or Raymarine, um, you're going to want to put charts on it. Um, it will show you a very basic coastline without the charts. And really what you need to do is you need to buy the charts and they'll send you an SD card with the charts you loaded into the chart plotter. So the reason that people really like OpenCPN is, of course, it's, it's free. Um, you can run OpenCPN on a laptop. You can run it on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and this is really the desirable thing to do because I bought my charts from OChart in Europe and the charts were $30 for the west coast of Canada. Um, if you start looking at Mexico, um, $20 for all the charts. Um, if you go into the Caribbean, um, you can buy the charts for Cuba. I believe the charts for Cuba are $30. So if you had to buy those charts uh, for Garmin or, or one of these other um, chart plotters like B&G or somebody else, Ray Marine, um, those charts are about $200. Uh, for each area. You you know, if you're traveling, uh, you could spend $1,000 on charts uh, for a multifunction display like B&G, Mary Marine, Garmin, any of these. So, if, you know, if you're traveling, um, that's what you're kind of in for with a uh, chart plotter. I'm probably going to buy a chart, chart plotter just as an emergency backup. Um, you know, I can buy a little seven or nine inch chart plotter for pretty expensive, like a $1,000. Um, you pay for that once, but you pay for the charts forever. Um, so that's the whole thing about why a lot of people um, are not too happy with buying these expensive chart plotters. And the bigger ones are not cheap. Like once you get up into the 12 inch range, you know, you're looking at two, three, four, five thousand $5,000. I've watched a lot of boating people and a lot of people that are have sailing channels and they walk around the boat and point out all of the failed chart plotters. 
um, be, you know, as one guy was was showing us that he was using uh, Open Plotter and Open CPN because it was free; he could run it on his laptop. And then he walked around his cockpit and he pointed out B and G dead, Garmin dead, uh, Ray Marine dead. He was in the process of removing all these chart plotters because they didn't work anymore. Um, but Open CPN, um, you can run it on pretty much anything you want. And the great thing about running the Raspberry Pi in the boat is the amount of power that it uses is almost non-existent. The power that it's the system is going to use is going to be the touchscreen. So you could dim down the touchscreen. Um, you can run it in red mode at night, um, and they're dimmable. So you can make it as dim or as bright as you want. Uh, if you're running on low, low on power, you could just dim it down to the point where you can see it and still use it. Um, so that's something that I wanted to show you guys. And um, there's a lot of interesting things here on this these programs. Back to Windy. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you guys next week. Uh, what I'm going to do with this thing now is I'm going to build a waterproof enclosure for the Raspberry Pi, the uh, AIS hat that goes on it, all of my sensors, my power supply. Everything's going to be in a waterproof box, so I'll do uh, another video on the build of that next week. So that's it for me. Thanks a lot. Okay guys, that's it for me. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video and I'll see you next weekend for some more sailboat DIY.